Welcome to Joseph Dion, where you'll get a little shot of what my life is like living with SMA. Today I wanted to talk about hobbies and how important it is to have one. Whatever your interests are, from gaming to reading, photography, or even music, whatever you're interested in, I really encourage you to pursue. Not only will it keep your mind activated, but it'll also keep your muscles activated. I don't know about you, but I've never been a real big fan of physical therapy. But I've found that if I keep busy with my hobbies, it helps me to keep moving. My favorite hobby is crafting. From sewing to embroidery or paper crafting. Whatever it is, I like to try it. As my disability has progressed, I've had to make modifications to my hobby. For example, my sewing. I used to have a sewing machine and I'd put the foot pedal up on the table and use my arm to press it. When that got to be too difficult, I actually found a machine that had a start stop button. That way I could just press the button to start and stop the machine without having to press the foot pedal. And I used to sew big bed size quilts. Well now I just do small wall hangings because they're a lot more manageable. And it's still, I have trouble with doing some things with sewing. And I've found people with similar hobbies and interests to help me out with the things that I can't do. Photography isn't a big hobby of mine, but when I was younger and there was this thing called a film camera, you had to actually look through the peephole to take a picture. Well, since I could barely lift my own arms up to my face, there's no way that I could lift a camera that high. So I would lift it as high as I could and just try and eyeball the shot. Well, most of my shots came out wonky and crooked. But when digital photography came out, there was a little screen so I could see what the image was that I was taking. And I could take several shots and pick the best one. Now, the cameras are voice activated. So all I have to do is say smile and it'll snap the picture. They even have drones that you can fly around and take shots of places that you can't even get to. I think that's pretty neat. I actually entered one of my photographs in the county fair and won a purple ribbon. It was under mystery photo. Can you tell what it is? It's the close-up of a tortoise shell. Isn't he cute? I'm going to show you how I do my favorite hobby of sewing. And it just gives you an idea of what I go through to get my project done. So here it is. I hope you enjoy. Today I'm going to show you my sewing project and how I work on my sewing. I have company though, so we'll see if they start laughing in the middle of it. Anyway, I have a videographer, she's my niece, can you wave in front of the camera? And they're going to help me show you how I sew. First of all, I have a tip, I use a toilet paper roll to put under my arm for a uh, wedge to kind of, so I can reach things. And then I'm working on the sewing project that I got for Christmas from my mom. And if you shove hands over here, you can see all of the pieces were pre-cut which I can't cut fabric, so that works. And now I'm gonna show you how I use my sewing machine. I have a Husqvarna Viking Designer 2 machine, and what I like about it is it has a start-stop button, so I don't have to use the foot pedal that usually you do when you use a sewing machine. Yep, it's right there. And so I have my pieces put together, and all I have to do is, well, I'm going to do this so I can line it up, and then you push start, and I turn the speed all the way down to low, so it doesn't race off on me. And then when you're done, you just push stop, and we're ready to go to the next piece. So that's how I sew on my sewing machine. Tommy sew my squares together of that quilt top I was showing you. 
And once I got those squares sewn together, I sewed them into strips, and now I'm sewing my last strips together. It's really important for me to pin my blocks because as it's in the machine, I don't have the ability to scooch it in the right spot. So I make sure I have it pinned really well. And then the tricky part for me is to get it in the right spot. And I just push this start stop button on my machine and it takes off. Normally you would pull the pins out as you go, but that's too difficult for me. If you have your pins perpendicular, uh, you should run over them no problem. Every once in a while I run over one and it bends the pin, but I haven't broken a needle yet, so that's a good thing. And I just try and keep it lined up as I go. Sometimes if the fabric separates a little, you can kind of use your fingernails to scooch it in place. But that's why you pin it, so you shouldn't have to do that too much. And the tricky part for me is to push stop, but yay, it stopped. And there you have it. So now that I have all the black sewn, I'm just taking the pins out. And I use a toilet paper roll as an arm wedge, and it also makes a great pin cushion, just if you need something quick to stick your pins into. Here's a pin that's a little bent, so I probably nicked that when I was sewing it. But as soon as I get the pins out here, I'll show you what my block looks like. And I'll use my sleeve as a pin cushion to be even quicker. Here is my finished block, and I always uh, check and make sure all the points match and the corners match, and now it's going to go on my mom's uh, ironing pile. I do have a mini iron I use called the Clover Iron, but this project's a little bit too big for that, so I'll have someone else iron it, and I'm at my mom's house, so... She gets to be the one to iron it for me. Here's the top totally finished. Once I got the sets of two blocks sewn together with their sashing strips, I handed it off to mom to sew the rows together. It just got a little bit big for me to manage, so she was able to sew those up for me. Once the top was done, we sent it off to the Missouri Star Quilt Company to do the quilting. That's when they put the batting and the backing on and stitch a cool design on it. So it'll be fun to get that back and I'll have a finished project. It can be a little bit discouraging when it takes me about 10 times longer to do a project than your average person. But when it's done, you get that sense of accomplishment. This will be a great lap size quilt or a wall hanging. And I can look at that and say, I did that. That's why I encourage all of you to pursue whatever makes you happy and gives you that feeling of accomplishment. That's all I have for you today. Have a good day and bye for now.